there, James Madison. This is your instructor, Suzanne Thompson. And today I bring to you another Grammar Might video. Yes, guys, my aim is to build those grammar skills to empower you to be good writers, to be proficient writers in our English class. So today we are looking at independent versus dependent clauses. Yes. Now we want to make sure that here at James Madison, that you are writing complete sentences that make sense. So let's look at the difference between an independent and, an, in, and a dependent clause. Now, an independent clause must stand on its own. It must make sense. It doesn't rely on something else to make sense, in other words. So for example, something as simple as, I love you, or my friend went to jail, or I heard from Santa Claus. <laughs> Those are independent clauses. They don't rely on any other thing to make the sentence make sense, okay? And, um, an independent clause, it's usually, usually consists of a subject and a verb, okay? So, I love you. What would be the subject in I love you? And what would be the verb? In the sentence, I love you, well, I would be the subject because I am the person doing the action. So, usually in an independent clause, the subject is the thing, place, or idea, or person that is doing the action or being something. So I love you, I am loving you. I am doing the action. So where is the verb in that sentence? Well, we always wanna look for the action, right? So the action in that sentence is love. So love is, in, is the verb in that sentence. I love you, right? I, the subject, loves you. Okay, so that's, an independent clause. Now let's look at a dependent clause. A dependent clause just does just what it says. It depends on something else to make sense. It's dependent. It relies on something else, another sentence to make sense. So, and you can start off with an with a dependent clause, or the dependent clause can follow the independent clause. So I could say, I don't want to go to the movies because that movie theater sucks, right? I don't want to go to the movies because that movie theater sucks. Now, where was where is the independent clause? The independent clause actually came before the dependent clause. I don't want to go to the movies is a complete sentence. But then I added, because that movie theater sucks. Because that movie theater sucks would be the dependent clause. If I had only written because that movie theater sucks, that would not have been a complete thought. It relies on that first sentence. I don't want to go to the movies. Right? You see how that works? I could have started this way. Because that movie theater sucks, I don't want to go to the movies. So you see where we can start with the dependent clause as well as it, the dependent clause can follow the independent clause. And there are so many other examples I could give you today. There you have it, Jane Madison. Today you learned about independent versus dependent clauses. And hopefully in our next Grammar Might video, we could go over coordinating conjunctions and subordinating conjunctions and how those work in with, with relating to independent clauses as well as within a dependent and an independent clause working together. So take care until our next Grammar Might video. Happy learning. Thank mm -hmm. you.